and welcome to another VRTK tutorial video. In this video, we're going to show how we can set up collider followers that get a collider and a rigid body to follow our interactor around so we can interact with objects without needing to pick them up. Please consider becoming a VRTK patron. There are plenty of membership levels to sign up at and it really helps to fund these videos. Thanks to all the existing patrons and those patrons who are at the relevant level for a video shout out, you'll see your name scroll up on the screen. Thanks for your support. I'm extending the scene where we set up the rigid body tracked pig. So what we need to do to start with is download the collider follower package. So simply again, go to window, down to Tilia, and then to the package importer. And then if we look down, we can see trackers collider follower. So we're going to add that to our project. And when that's added, we can close the package importer down. So now what I want to do is set up two collider followers, one for our left controller and one for our right controller. And these will follow around our actual controllers, but will be actual rigid body colliders in the scene so they can interact with things. So to start with, I'm just going to create a game object to hold these new objects in. So just create a new empty game object and I'm going to call this physics controllers. And to start with, I'll set up the right controller. So within here, I'm just going to create another child game object and I'm going to just call this right physics controller and this game object is now going to contain all the relevant bits we need to create the physics track right controller so the first thing i'm going to do is add in the collider follower so with this selected I'm just going to right click go down to tilia then to prefabs and then if we look in trackers we now have trackers collider follower i need to add one of those so i'll add that in and i'll just rename this to right collider follower so we need to set up the source which this collider follower is going to follow so all we need to do is if we expand our tracked alias and then our aliases on our right controller alias, we'll just get it to follow our right interactor around. So we'll set that as the source and then we'll make sure snap on enable is set. And what this will do is whenever we enable this game object, the collider follower will automatically snap to the position and rotation of our real interactor. So with that set up, what I'm now going to do is just customize the collider that we get provided. By default, we're given this sphere collider, which we don't actually want. What I want to do is mimic the collider that's on our right interactor. So if I look at our right interactor in avatar container, we've got an example avatar that's got a box collider and this game object is 0 0.02, 0 0.02, 0 0.1 in scale. So we're going to recreate that. So we'll go down to our collider in our right collider follower. We're going to change the scale to match and then we don't want the sphere collider. So I'm going to untick that. You could also delete it if you wished. And what I'm going to do here is add a box collider. And that's all we need to do for that. That's now set up. What we can do is if we just add in a child 3D object of a cube, we can use this just to create a representation. However, we don't want a box collider on this. And I'm going to set the material to something different. So if I look in materials, I'm just going to use translucent green. So this will just give us a representation of that physics controller. The next thing we need to be aware of is our collider follower will actually follow the position, the rotation and the scale of the source we don't actually want it to copy the source scale because if we look at the source scale that's actually one 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 which will set our collider back to one 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 we don't want that so we can turn that off simply by going to our right collider follower looking in internal then in the rigid body follower and then in internal again if we look at the follow modifier and then rigid body follow we can just turn off the scale game object and that will stop the scale from actually being applied we can now collapse all this back up as we don't need it anymore. So now we've got a rigid body collider that will follow our interactor wherever it goes. However, the problem we've got now is if we try to pick something up, we're constantly pushing that interactive object out of the way, making it difficult to pick up. So what we actually want is to be able to enable or disable this collider follower based on some sort of action. So what I'm going to have is when we press the grip button and we're not grabbing something, we're going to turn on the collider follower so we can poke and push things around. But when we release the grip, it will turn off. And then when we put a hand inside an interactable object and press grab, we'll turn off the collider follower and just pick up as normal. So to do that, what we're going to do is set up another game object to handle that logic. So again, in the right physics controller game object, I'm going to create another child empty game object. And I'm going to call this toggle logic. And we've got two actions that we want in our toggle logic. We've got an activate and we've got a deactivate. So I'm going to create two more child game objects in here, one called activate and one called deactivate. And in deactivate, all we want here is to add an empty proxy emitter component. 
And when that gets called, all we're going to do is deactivate our right collider follower. So set right collider follower as the object. And then in the function, we just want to say game object set active ball and make sure it's unticked so it's false. And now in our activate logic, we don't want to use the empty event proxy emitter now because we want to make sure that everything is cleaned up when we've pressed our grab so we don't get an accidental activation. So we're just going to get it to wait a frame before we do anything. And the easiest way to do that is just use one of the yield emitters and we'll just add the wait till end of frame yield emitter. And all this will do is it'll wait one frame and then it will call whatever we put in yielded. So what we want to do in yielded is turn on the right collider follower. So we'll drop that into there. Game object, set active and make sure it's ticked. And now we want to hook up these. So when we press our right grip, our activate happens. And when we release our right grip, our deactivate happens. So on our toggle logic, we'll add a Boolean action. And the source for our Boolean action is going to be the same as our grip button on right interactor. So if I select right interactor, we can see our grab action is right grip press. So if I select that, it will show us in the hierarchy. So on our toggle logic, in our sources, all I need to do is say we've got one source and that source is right grip press. And then when we press that button, activated occurs. And all we want to do is call activate and then wait for end of frame yield emitter and call begin. And then when we deactivate it, all we want to do is call deactivate and then empty event proxy emitter. We just want to call receive. So what will happen now when we press our grip button, our right collider follower will turn on. And when we release our grip button, it will turn off. But what we also need to do is make sure that when we actually grab something, we don't want any of this logic to work at all. So we're going to turn that off within our right interactor. So within our right interactor, when we grab, the first thing we want to do is make sure we call deactivate. So we're going to call deactivate and we're just going to call the empty event proxy emitter and call receive. And then secondly, in grab, we just want to turn off our toggle logic. So that means whatever we do with that grip button isn't going to turn on or off our collider follower. So that game object set active ball, make sure it's off. And then when we ungrab, we just want to turn our toggle logic back on. So in the ungrabbed, toggle logic and game object set active make sure that's turned back on and that's our right controller set up the last thing we need to do is just make sure our right collider follower is disabled by default as we don't want it automatically on and that's the right one set up so what i can do now is just copy this over for the left one so simply just copy and paste this object and then i'll rename this the left physics controller and now all we need to do is go through and make any changes that are referencing the right controller to reference the left controller so I'm just going to change this from right collider follower to left collider follower. And then instead of pointing the source to the right interactor, we want it to point to the left interactor. So I'll drag and drop that into there. And then on our toggle logic, rather than looking for right grip press, we actually want it to look for left grip press. So if I go and find left grip and put left grip press in there. And then the last thing we need to do is go over to our left interactor. And on our left interactor, we need to set up the relevant grabbed and ungrabbed events again. So on grabbed, we're going to add two in. And the first thing we want to do on the left grabbed is call our left deactivate logic. So again, deactivate event proxy emitter and just call receive. And then we want to turn off our toggle logic game object. So toggle logic game object set active false. And then in our ungrabbed, all we want to do is turn our toggle logic back on. So game object, set active, and make sure it's ticked for true. And that's it. We've now set up two collider followers that will follow our left and right controller. And when they're activated by pressing the grip button, they'll activate physics collider that can push objects around in the scene. So let's jump into play mode and see that working. So now we're in the scene. We can see if I press the right grip button, we can see we have this collider that's following around and we can see the mesh that we added and the same for the left. So if I was to push my hand through the object, nothing happens, as we can see. But if I was to activate the collider by pressing the grip button, we now can push that object around without picking it up. And then if I was to grab it, we can see that that collider is no longer being activated. And if we activate the other one, we can push into there. And you can see it's having an impact where that collider isn't being able to pass through the other one because they're both rigid bodies. I hope this has been useful to you. If it has, please consider becoming a YouTube subscriber. Leave any comments down below, leave any likes or dislikes, and please consider becoming a BRTK patron, as that really helps. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.